Hello and welcome to another video from gardeningwithjason.com It's uh, yet another week of the lockdown and uh, I'm starting to transform my little backyard into something more habitable. You can see over here we're in the process of painting the walls. This bit of scrubland here that was growing weeds and too dark to grow anything other than sort of hostas. I've covered that over to make a nice seating area. I've got some nice tiles and I'm uh, going to jet wash all those. Planted up some um, buckets with uh, flowers. So those hopefully are going to uh, attract some pollinators into the garden later on. But more than anything else, they just brighten the place up. I've got some more to plant yet. I've been down to the allotment. I'm not sure. We Obviously, we're allowed to travel there at the moment, but we're not sure for how much longer that's going to last. So I've brought back some herbs. And you can see, if you remember in the previous video, I showed you the mint going crazy. There's some mint. I brought it home and planted it in the container there. And some chives. They're two of my favourite herbs. Now, obviously, I do have limited space here. So I decided I'm not going to go crazy bringing everything home. So I'm just going to bring a couple of bits home and then I can uh, enjoy those because they're something I use quite a lot of. And I've brought home some strawberries. So I've got some strawberry plants in there as well because I do like my strawberries. The runners went crazy. I need to thin them. And I don't want to spend too much time um, at the allotment at the present moment. But what I've also done is if we look up here, is you can see I've put a piece of guttering on the wall there and planted some strawberries in there. So I had this down at the allotment and I had some problems with it because it needed watering once or twice a day because it does dry out quite quickly. So it didn't do very well down at the allotment, unfortunately, because I couldn't get there often enough. Um, so what I've done is I've brought it home and put it on the wall there. So I can water this every day now very, very easily. And I'm hoping they'll do all right. They, they, the plants were a little bit wilted yesterday um, this one looked a bit poor anyway, but the, the rest of them have perked up quite nicely. I only put that one in there because it did look poor and I thought if it dies, it doesn't matter because of the spacing. But anyway, it's, um, it's interesting. So I'm looking forward to those coming up and seeing what's happening there. Now I showed you last time my brassica seedlings and there's calendula on the left there. And these have actually started to come up. I haven't had much luck with uh, I can't mean celery. Celery doesn't appear to have shown its head yet, but all the um, a lot of the brassicas have, and they're coming up quite nicely, which is very very good. Um, so I'll plant out the calendula when it's a bit bigger. I've got uh, a flower garden at the front of the house, which uh, I, I'll put them in because I, I attract lots of pollinators there. Now you will remember that I planted out some pots with some lettuces. And uh, this this is them. Let's bring. This is a spicy salad leaves, and you can see it's come up quite nicely. Um, I've got the door open today for a bit of air circulation because the soil's a little bit damp, but you can see it's come up quite nicely, and um, won't be too long before I can harvest those. I'm going to plant some more, so I'm going to plant another two or three containers like that. And the idea is is that I'm going to have a continuous crop then over sort of several weeks. So rather than me harvest this then plant some more and then have to wait if i keep planting every couple of weeks i'll have a, a fairly continuous crop because one of the problems i've got at the moment is i quite like salad i'm eating a lot of it at the moment uh, obviously i'm not as active as i used to be so uh, the problem is this salad only keeps in your fridge for a couple of days so you, you have to keep popping out to get it and we're not meant to be popping out so i figured if i grew it and i did succession planting then hopefully I have enough that I don't need to continually go out. And you can see this one's, um, this is the same one spicy salad mix. So again, it looks very nice. And down there was just a regular um, one as well. So that's uh, that's doing all right as well. Um, over here, oh, I've rearranged everything. As you can see, the horseradish is sending up quite a nice strong shoot there. It's only the one at the moment, but uh, that's that's a good start. So that's looking positive. Um, it will obviously, once it gets a bit bigger, I'm going to move it, but it's just there because it's out of the way. Um, obviously, we've got limited space. And down there, that's the radishes. It's took them a long time. I didn't think they were actually going to ever appear, um, but they have appeared. And I do need to move them from under there. I want to put them out the front here. Oh. So they're a bit more, in a bit brighter position because I wasn't sure whether it was the fact that they had... Um, they were in a bit of a dull position, which is why they hadn't performed. 
So that's what I've been up to down here. So what we're going to do next is we, um, I'm going to talk you through planting some seeds, particularly some tomato seeds and uh, some more bits and pieces ready for uh, the summer. So I'll uh, go and get that all set up and then we'll come back and see what's happening. Oh, by the way, bricks at the bottom. If you've got any of these plastic greenhouses, I will tell you right now, they are very, very mobile particularly in high winds, you will find them all over the place. So you need to weigh them down. So I've put bricks in the bottom on the struts, which hopefully will weigh them down. If the wind picks up, I have over there, my emergency supply of bricks, and they will also be put on the bottom and that will hopefully weigh them down. This one here in the last set of high winds did actually move halfway across the garden. Luckily there was nothing in it at the time, um, but you do need to be aware that these are very very mobile so if you have them make sure they are weighed down properly okay so right let's go over to the seed planting area now so we're going to start by sowing some tomatoes we've got um this is an f1 variety i don't normally grow f1s but this look quite nice and there's not a lot of availability at the moment so i had to buy what i could find so we've got some f1 shimmer these are red and uh green gold stripes or so I thought that was quite interesting. We've got Mini Bell, that's a, a tumbling one, I think. So that might be really good. I've got some hanging baskets, so I'm gonna try that in there. And then Roma and Black Russian. So we're gonna try those. And um, I'm also gonna plant some aubergines as well. I'm not gonna plant chilies and peppers. I don't particularly use them. Uh, they take up space. And at the end of the day, um, they don't do very well here. So I'm gonna try grow, grow all these. I'm going to put them into this container and then they're going to go inside and they're going to go under growing lamps rather than uh, being out here. So let's fill this up with some soil. Uh, I'm going to get some potting compost. If you're struggling to get your potting compost or anything similar, I would recommend going to one of the supermarkets. They tend to have it. It's not the best of stuff, I will admit, but there's been a real rush on compost at the moment. So... Uh, your best bet is to just get what you can. Uh, it's not ideal um, in most years. This certainly isn't the stuff I would buy, um, but there's, there's not a lot, of, a lot of choice, like I said, unfortunately. A lot of people have decided that they're taking up gardening this year. Uh, I mean, I went out to buy uh, some white masonry paint the other day, and uh, could I find any? Nope. Everyone has seemed to have decided that this uh, lockdown is a great opportunity to sort their garden out and do all those things that they've been meaning to do for a long time. Apparently all the DIY stores are absolutely rammed at the moment. Um, they're staying open and doing click and collect rather than um, allowing people into stores, but they're very, very busy. And even click and collect is, uh, can be a several day lead time. So, you know, it's a good opportunity, like I said, a lot of people have seen it as a good opportunity to do stuff uh, around the house. Uh, let's just get rid of that. Yeah, this isn't the best of uh, potting compost I've ever seen. It's full of lumps and everything else, and it wasn't the cheapest either, but unfortunately, like I said, you've got to make do with what you've got. So I'll pick out the lumps as, as and when I find them. Um, just to, and I'll get rid of them later on. Unfortunately, there's quite quite a lot of lumps in it. It's definitely not the best, but hopefully the uh, tomatoes and aubergines won't complain too much. I'm not going to go crazy planting these because obviously when I put in them all, um, they're still at the present time of filming a, a risk of a stricter lockdown. And certainly at that point, we don't know whether or not um, we are going to be able to go out at all after that. So we all need to be prepared for whatever's gonna happen, right? Uh, there's my pencil. Uh, let's start with uh, this one, F1 Shimmer. Um, I used to tear the tops off to these and then I realized that I was cutting this bit off that's actually quite useful so um, in the end, I started opening it at the bottom because I realised there was a flap there. I'm sure many of us do the same. 
and I'm, I'm hope, really, really hoping it's not just me. Um, oh, typical, I can't get in there. I get into these really, really easily when I'm not filming. It's only when I'm ever filming that I have problems. Right. Let's uh, get inside. Let's just grab my junk. Oh, there's not, not very many seeds in here at all. Um, so I'm going to be careful. Again, these aren't the easiest to get into. So I'm going to plant four of these. We probably just as well, because there's only about ten seeds. So I'm going to just put one, cover it slightly. Two, cover it slightly. Three, cover it slightly. And take out the big lump. And four, cover it slightly. Right, let's fold the top over. Uh, tomato seeds, like most seeds, are very small, very easy to lose, so that can go over there. And this is tomato F1 shimmer. So it's just right, that's on here. Uh, the, the thing with F1 seeds, in case you don't know, some might be some of you that aren't aware of this, F1 seed plants, you cannot keep the seeds from them. They are either sterile or they do not grow true. These these are artificially grown, um, so they're, they're artificially bred, they're not naturally bred. Heritage seeds, or ones that aren't labelled uh, F1, uh, they, they're varieties you can keep the seeds. So if I wanted to keep these seeds for next year, then they'd either not grow or they wouldn't grow into the same type of tomato. So we're just gonna put that in there. And let's get our next one. I'm gonna actually plant two rows of this one. This is the mini bell. Um, I quite like cherry tomatoes. Uh, I think um, I think actually if I plant two rows of this, this will work very nicely in my grand scheme of things and, and fill this tray. Um, So let me just get the label ready. Tomato mini bell. Put that over there. Again, it's uh, another seed packet that I'm struggling to get into because I'm on camera. It's typical, really. So again, this has got a few more, a few more seeds in. Almost threw them everywhere. Uh, if you're struggling to get hold of seeds, by the way, uh, which a lot of us are, a lot of the seed companies are really, really busy or they've sold out, same with the shops, uh, have a look on the magazines on the shelves. There's quite a few magazines at the moment that have seeds on them. Kitchen Garden magazine is out now. They've got 10 packets of seeds. I'll show you them in a minute. Um, and they also, if anyone's interested, have a copy of my book, 77 Gardening Tips, on the cover. So you can certainly check that out. Get a load of free seeds and um, also get a free book as well. So that's that, that planted. Now, rather than sit here and waffle away to you while I'm planting seeds, what I'm going to do is I'll just show you some of the other things I'm going to plant. Um, I've got a whole load of lettuces. So we've got some wild rocket. An Andean superfood mix that came on Kitchen Garden magazine, as did this Italian mix. And then these are some of the ones that I planted earlier on. Um, where's the other? Ah, here they are. These are the herbs. I might actually plant some of these with you. Um, but you can see I've got these all came in Kitchen Garden magazine. You've got, um, we've got basil, oregano, thyme, parsley, coriander, and garlic chives. So I've got some uh, containers, same containers, the mints in. I'm going to plant those as well. So that'll be quite exciting. Um, I'm going to start off uh, squashes, courgettes and sweet corn. These I'm starting, again, you can see from a magazine. These I'm starting in the vain hope that I'll be able to get to the allotment. And then I've got a bunch of flowers as well. And this is one I'm actually quite excited about. I, I, um, I, this is Electric Daisy. 
I, I, I saw these on a video where they were recreating the drinks that are in Galaxy's Edge in Disney. So Disney in Florida and California have this new Star Wars land and it, it's very, very themed and they've got some special cocktails that you can buy. Admittedly, you've got to sell a, a, an organ to buy them, but they have these um, wonderful looking cocktails. And I watched a, a YouTube video about a guy who was recreating them. Oh, obviously, I'm a bit of a Star Wars fan. And the guy was recreating them and he used the electric daisy now this gives a fizzy space dust if you remember the you know, space dust crackles in your mouth like effect when eaten and it's got a bit of a apparently according to the back here which i'm reading to you it says a delicious wasabi like lick on smoked salmon or sushi so i was quite intrigued by this and thought well i've never heard of electric daisy um i've never seen it so let's buy some so i bought some seeds so i'm going to plant those as well because I'm quite excited about those and if I get really brave I might even try recreating that cocktail but I'm going to get on planting the, these now I'm going to get the rest of the tomatoes and aubergines planted probably going to get some sunflowers in today always love sunflowers um, worst case if uh, I can't get through the lot at least I can go in the front garden and uh, impress all the local kids they, they love looking at all the flowers and the insects on them so um, right, I'm going to get planting and I will come back to you and talk you through some more stuff later on. Right, I'm going to plant this up with some herbs. I've decided to put oregano in one side, thyme in another, and parsley in the other. The other three herbs have got coriander. Coriander grows quite tall, um, so I want that to go in its own container. That's going to go into a bigger plant. It has quite long roots, um, so that does not share nicely with these. These will all grow quite well in here. Basil, Basil likes it warm. He prefers it sort of be fair over here in the greenhouse. So I'm going to plant this one in its own container again, and then it can stay inside. And then garlic chives, well, they're garlic, and they may well infest the others and, and, and make them smell a little. So I'm going to grow these again in a separate container. Now, I'm going to scatter these. These aren't going to be thinned out. Um, but again, 500 seeds there. So that's a, a lot of plants. The advantage of um, oregano is oregano produces flowers that are quite popular with, with insects. And marjoram by far is, is uh, one of the best, um, but thyme also produces a flower that insects love. So again, as I live in a, a quite an urban area, we, we do lack insects. And it was very noticeable when I, when I first arrived here, I, I noticed a real lack of insects and it, it really confused me. And then I realized it was very, very few, uh, very small habitat for them here. So what I decided to do was plant out my front garden with flowers. And when I, when I did that, what was really, really noticeable to me within sort of a couple of weeks of the flowers starting to bloom was how many insects suddenly appeared. I mean, there was, there was loads and loads of them. And it was, it was really interesting. I think this year, I might actually start cataloguing them, start taking photos and, and taking more details of what's actually arriving in the area because there were so many of them. And the lovely thing is, is they, they, there was all sorts of bees. I, I spotted sort of two or three types of bees. Um, um, uh, what do you call them? Hoverflies, uh, lace wings. All of these are beneficial insects that we all want to attract into our garden because they're very, very good for us. You know, lacewings and aphids, they eat, um, uh, they, they eat aphids. And, you know, obviously I've, I have roses in the front and they are always infested with aphids. So the, uh, so, so attracting these insects is actually really, really good because it means I don't need to use any chemicals. Uh, this year though, I have bought uh, neem oil and I'm gonna try neem oil on the uh, uh, roses. Uh, the 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 aphids have actually already appeared and started um, uh, infesting them, which is quite early for them. So I'm I'm going to go out later on with the neem oil, and um, I've got some mild dish soap. Don't use your fairy liquid or anything like that. By the way, that's that's actually quite can be quite harmful. But if you get um, online, you can get a mild. Uh, it's called the Castile uh, soap. C A S T I L L E. And it's a very, very gentle, mild liquid soap. And you mix it with your uh, neem oil 
and, and it makes quite an effective spray uh, against aphids. Now let me see what we've got in here. Ah, 450 seeds, approximately. I'd love to know who sits and counts these, but and who's got the space to grow all of these? Anyway, this, this is going to come up quite nicely. These are slightly bigger, so. So I'm planting quite a few and it, it will produce a nice thick display of plants. I'm going to leave the middle clear um, and that way the middle has got, uh, the plants can grow that way if they need to. So it's just, um, again, I quite like herbs and what I can do with these is I can make some mixed herbs or other things for myself at home. And it's just, um, I, you know, a little bit more self-sufficiency. So this is parsley, put that in there, rough up the surface. You can see I'm not really, th these will do okay just on the surface like this. Um, most of them go underground like that. I mean, if I wanted to, I could just scrape the surface away like that. And then look, this is the other way. This has got a thousand seeds, so keep me in parsley for years. Um, even, I don't, don't know anyone that can eat that amount of parsley, but I'm sure there's people out there that can. So, uh, oh, these are quite big seeds. So I take a handful, and scatter them around. Again, not too worried about spacing because I want a quite wild um, effect here. I don't want sort of neatly ordered and then just cover them over like that and see. I think I think we're doing it. There you are, so that's that sorted. Um, so it's looking looking good. Put that over there. And then that's done. That's another one of these planted up.